Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about something that I think a lot of people care about, but it's something that I see a lot of people as not being all that good at. And it's something that I think I'm particularly good at, and that is influencing people to change their viewpoints when they have a strongly opposing viewpoint to my own. I've actually had a number of experiences in my life where I've spoken with people close to me who had really different viewpoints from mine on various issues. They could be issues like racism, or sexuality, or religion, and things like that. And I've been able to influence people in a variety of different ways. I've also had other people influence me in profound ways, and change my viewpoints. And I've seen sort of, on both ends, what works and what doesn't. And I want to present this key concept that I think can be really empowering for influencing people in a positive way. And that is, the stronger someone opposes your viewpoint, the more difference of opinion you have, the more important it is for you to be cautious in talking to them to not overstate your own viewpoint. Kind of to make your reasoning more airtight, and to make sure that everything that you're saying is true, and that you're kind of limiting the scope of your statements. So I want to get specific about this. Let's use the example of racism. Racism is a topic, especially in the United States, where I see people having a pretty large difference of opinion. I know quite a few people who believe that there isn't very much racism in America. Most of these people are white, and I even know some people who believe that there is like a lot of reverse racism, in which minorities, especially African Americans and Hispanics, are kind of given special status, and that those people then are kind of better off than white people. So I know people who believe viewpoints like this, and I strongly disagree with these views. I tend to believe that especially black and Hispanic people in our society, are still strongly discriminated against in a wide variety of ways, like in terms of treatment by police, in terms of economic status, uh, the opportunities available to them, in terms of like depiction in the culture. I think that there are a lot of ways in which these racial groups are still disadvantaged relative to white people. Now, to me it might seem obvious, but I also went to a public school where white people were a minority, and I have a lot of direct experience observing racism sort of carried out by white people against these minorities. So, I think that my perspective kind of makes me better able to understand these issues than sort of the typical white person in the United States, that I think is kind of sheltered from these things. So, if I'm talking to someone who has these very different views from me on racism, I'm not going to just be like, well, like, black people and Hispanic people are strongly discriminated against. I'm not going to make a statement like that, because I know that the person doesn't believe that, and just stating that, it's sort of like, bam, you're just like banging your head against the wall, like what are you going to accomplish? Um, firstly, the first thing I do is to listen to the person, and I figure out what their viewpoints are. Just because someone opposes my viewpoints, doesn't mean that there isn't a lot of nuance in their viewpoints. There are a lot of different ways and different degrees to which people can oppose my views on racism. Uh, and so I want to figure out what the person's beliefs are and I want to figure out what specific points in their beliefs I disagree with. And then if I'm sharing my own perspective, first of all, I like to start by listening. I'm not going to just like dump my own views on someone. I think that's really rude, and I think it's kind of non-consensual. Most of the time, most people don't want to hear it. You can kind of tell, like if you start talking and their body language closes off, you can tell they don't want to hear it. Uh, I don't want to do that. I want to listen to someone first. So then, I have this point, like they maybe said one or two things that I, I'm like, I really disagree with this one thing that they said. So I often like to focus on something specific. So uh, someone might say something like, well, black people aren't discriminated against in the U.S. 
And so I'm like, okay, I disagree with that statement. So I might focus on that. I might say, hey, you said black people aren't discriminated against in the U.S. I might ask them a question. I might say, do you think that's always true? A lot of the times, just asking that one question will get them to agree with me. They'll be like, well, no, I don't think it's always true. I just think it's, it's true to a large degree or something like that. I think that's progress. I think that if you ask that one question and you get that response, you have influenced that person in a positive way, and you've, you've gotten them to acknowledge that there could be some forms of racism that maybe they haven't been focusing on. And I think that that will then open them to listen more if you share a specific example of this type of racism. So that's like already you've done something good. But then like say you want to share an experience. I could be like, hey, like I, uh, I've observed some things in my life. Uh, and I might be like, uh, I spent a lot of time living in Cleveland and I noticed that an overwhelming majority of African Americans in Cleveland live in neighborhoods that are really run down and not near centers of employment, whereas the white people in the Cleveland metro area are much more likely to live in these prosperous neighborhoods and they are closer to centers of employment. And if I share something like that, it's like a pretty specific thing. Someone might be like, well, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I agree with that, but then maybe they have a different explanation. Like, one thing I've seen people say is they're like, well, that's because black people are criminals and they trash their own communities and things like that. So it's like, that's another sort of racist idea that I hear people express. And oftentimes, if someone voices that, I can acknowledge it. I can say, well, I can see how you, you might see that as an explanation. But I could ask, do you think there are any other explanations? Like, do you think that it might at least a little bit go the other way around? Like, maybe people are more likely to commit crime if they don't have access to uh, economic opportunities to better themselves through jobs or things like that. And that maybe the higher crime rate in these communities is actually a function of, like, the economic status and not the other way around or maybe that they feed off of each other in a kind of cycle. Oh, I found that that, I'm more likely to get people acknowledging parts of my point. And if someone seems really strongly closed off to what I'm saying, then I try to get even more specific. So this is just an example. I could talk about racism at great length, and I don't want to go into too much detail about it now, but I think the general idea is this. If someone strongly opposes your viewpoint on an issue, I think it's important to listen to them, to be very specific about your points of disagreement, avoid making like global statements that disagree with things that they say or that you think you're, they're unlikely to agree with, and then try to speak from experience and give specific examples, and try to use like qualifiers, like do you think this might be a factor in some cases? Like, I sometimes hear people say, well, that's like a weakly worded statement. I actually think it's very strong when it comes to persuasion. Like, if you are limiting the scope of your statement, like if you're asking, do you think this could at least be a factor? Maybe it's not a big factor, but it's at least a factor. People are much more likely to agree with that statement. And I think that, you know, that can kind of start the wheels turning. So, I hope that I've been able to share some insights with you. I hope you'll be able to have more constructive conversations as a result with people who have differing viewpoints from your own. Um, I'd love to hear from you if you have anything to share, any stories, uh, any further suggestions or insights that you think are related to this topic, please comment. And as always, if you like what I have to say and you want this to reach more people, please share my videos and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.